It's another learning day, everyone. The end of second quarter is coming closer. And to discuss the last topic on radicals, this is your teacher Marlene. It's greeting you all. Mabuhay! So as I've said, the last topic on radicals is about solving problems involving radicals. And let us discover the real-life application of radicals through the following problems. Before we solve problems, always put in mind that every problem has the appropriate solution. Even in real life, we encountered lots of problems, but we can solve this mathematically or scientifically using the following steps. First, read and analyze the problem. Know the real problem. Analyzing it is our major task and before taking any actions. Next, let us identify the given and the required in the problem, draw or represent it as much as possible. From the details of the problem, you are going to write equation. This is the heart of the problem. Misleading or writing incorrect equation will result to incorrect answer, so be careful on this part. Then, you have to solve the equation. Check the result as possible. To analyze the correctness of your answer before writing the conclusion or writing your answer in a sentence. Let us have the first problem. Find a number such that the square root of 5 less than 3 times the number is 7. Analyzing the problem, we are looking for the number that satisfies the situation. So let us have the representation. Let n be the unknown number. In able to write the equation, let us translate each term of the problem into symbol. So the square root of 5 less than 3 times a number means the square root of 3n minus 5. And a 7 means equals 7. Now, let us solve the resulting equation. Since we have the square root on the left side, let us get the square of both sides. So, the square root of 3n minus 5 when squared is 3n minus 5. And the square of 7 is 49. And to eliminate negative 5 on the left side of the equation, let us add both sides by a positive 5. So that Pn is equal to 49 plus 5 or 54. Now let us divide both sides of our equation by 3. So that Pn divided by 3 is equal to n. And 54 divided by 3 is equal to 18. So n is 18. So similar to solving equations, let us do the checking. Substituting 18 in n, so the square root of 3 times 18 minus 5 is it equal to 7. So the square root of 3 times 18, which is 54, minus 5 is equal to 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. And 7 is equal to 7. That is a true statement. We can now conclude that the number is 18. Now, let me discuss to you a geometry-related problem. A rectangular piece of land is 75 meters long and 15 meters wide. What is the length of the diagonal of this rectangular land? Let us analyze the problem through this illustration. So let's say this is our rectangular piece of land. The length measures 75 meters and the width is 50 meters. And we are asked to find the diagonal. So to represent the known, we are going to use D as the length of the diagonal. So to find the equation, we are going to use the idea 
of the Pythagorean theorem such that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the altitude and the square of the base. Or in symbol, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So using the parts of the rectangle, let us substitute d as the hypotenuse to l for the base and w for the altitude. So d squared is equal to l squared plus w squared. And if we are going to find d, we're going to take the square root of both sides and substitute the given. So d is equal to the square root of the square of 75 plus the square of 50. Let us continue here. So copying our equation, d is equal to the square root of the square of 75 plus the square of 50. So let us start the solution by getting the square root of the square of 75, which is 5,625 added to the square of 50, which is 2,500. And getting the sum of 5,625 and 2,500 will give us 8,125. Then, using the prime factorization, we will arrive at the square root of 8,125 is the same as the square root of 5 raised to 4 times the square root of 13. Where the square root of 5 raised to 4 is 5 squared. And the value of 5 squared is 25. So, multiply to square root of 13 as the not perfect square. Let us have the checking. So substituting 25 square root of 13 in terms of D, we have to check the equality between 25 square root of 13. Is that equal to the square root of the square of 75 added to the square of 50? So to simplify, let us square both sides to eliminate the radical sign. So the square of 25 Square root of 13 is 625 times 13. And the square of 75 is 5625 plus the square of 50, which is 2500. Then 625 times 13 is 8125, which is also equal to the sum of 5625. And 2,500, which is also 8,125. Since the left and the right sides are equal, therefore, we conclude that the length of the diagonal of rectangular piece of land is 25 square root of 13 meters. Let us have our third problem. 5 times the square root of one more then a number is 40. What is the number? For our representation, let us use x to be the number. From the statement, 5 times the square root of 1 more than a number is 40, we can write this, the equation, such that 5 as the coefficient multiplied to the square root of x plus 1, is equal to 40. And to solve this, let us divide both sides of our equation by 5 to simplify our equation and avoid two large numbers. So let us cancel 5, that is equivalent to 1, and 14 divided by 5 is equal to 8 in our right side. So the result is the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 8. Now, to eliminate the square root sign, let us square both sides of the equation. So the square of the square root of x plus 1 is x plus 1. And the square of 8 is 64. Then, to eliminate 1 on the left side, let us add both sides by a negative 1. 
So, x is equal to 60. Now, for the checking, using the regional equation, 5 square root of x plus 1 is equal to 40. Let us substitute 63 for x. Then add 63 plus 1 is equal to 64. And getting the square root of 64, that is 8, multiplied to 5, will give us 40. And 40 is equal to 40. This is a true statement. Then we can now say that the number is 63. Let us see another application of radical using our next problem. A ladder 12 feet long leans against the wall of the building. The ladder touches the point of the wall 10 feet from the ground. How far is the foot of the ladder from the building? Let us have the illustration. And looking at the figure, a ladder is leaning on the wall and it formed a right triangle. Have you visualized it? Now, since we have a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Let's say this is the form triangle. The hypotenuse will be the length of the ladder. The height reached by the ladder on the wall is the altitude. So the base is missing. If the base is equal to D, as the unknown in the figure, let us solve for D. So our equation is 10 squared plus D squared is equal to 12 squared. So simplifying this, the square of 10 is 100 and the square of 12 is 144. By adding both sides by negative 100, we will result to d squared is equal to 144 minus 100, which is 44. Now, getting the square root of both sides, let us factor the square root of 44 to the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. And the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 11. So, for the checking, let us substitute 2 square root of 11 for D. So, to simplify, the square of 10 is 100. The square of 2 square root of 11 is 4 times 11, which is 44. And the square of 12 is 144. Adding 144 will give us 144. So, 144 is equal to 144. Therefore, we can now say that the foot of the ladder is 2 square root of 11 feet away from the building. That's all for today's lesson. Just keep in mind, it is normal for a normal people of having a problem. So if you encounter difficulties in solving problems, just follow the detailed steps in order to move forward and meet the good reward of correct answers. So let me give you our food for thought in facing life's problem. The key is this. Meet today's problem with today's strength. Don't start tackling tomorrow's problem until tomorrow. You do not have tomorrow's strength yet. You simply have enough today by Max Lozado. Thank you for watching. God bless everyone.